and that was if you go back in the archives as lee this is lee's i'm taking lee's thunder now i don't know what episode it was but pod box you'll find it on the audio go to inspirationnation.org.uk and we'll, you'll be talking about Brooklyn Nine-Nine there. So That's the one. That. And I'm going to say, your... Inspiration Nation, hello, we are oh, here. Okay. Joe is already oh, keeping TikTok amused. Just follow us there. And we are live now on YouTube and, of course, across all podcast platforms. And we're shaking up this week. We're trying something new. We're going to be giving out a quote every week. And we're going to talk about that quote. This is our new model for the podcast, if you like. Um, and I'm up first. So I'm going to give you a quote. In fact, I'm going to ask you a question, then I'm going to give you a quote. So, oh. if I was to ask either of you, who is the greatest boxer of all time, who would you say? No thinking, just answer. Muhammad Ali. Grifster? Floyd Mayweather. Okay. Joe gave the right answer for the context of the podcast. So, 50% <laughs> hit rate. So, my quote is, I am the greatest, from Muhammad Ali. And the reason I want to talk about this quote isn't because I believe... In fact, I know not very much about boxing whatsoever i was going to swear there but i'm not swearing um as you know i'm a fan of the much more competitive sporting world of professional wrestling than i am boxing but i don't know a lot about boxing i do know muhammad ali he's in culture i do know the quote i am the greatest and i do know that a lot of people would say 50 percent hit rate here that muhammad ali is the greatest boxer of time even muhammad ali from things i've read didn't really think he's great in fact he first said this all the way back in 1964, when Joe was 30 years old, um, when he was 22 years old, only 22, wow. hadn't won a world title, definitely was not the greatest, but he spoke it into existence. He said it so often that he believed it and people believed it. And it's almost, it's entered the zeitgeist. It's transcended boxing. I know about it. And I could probably name five boxers and one of them would be Frank Bruno. I'm so out of date. But this is, you know, in terms of picking a quote, I think this is one of, you know, this is top 10 all time, I think, of a quote and its its ramifications. But my angle on this is, I suppose it's twofold. One is affirmations. So he was telling himself he's the greatest. He was telling everyone else, but it was also telling himself. It's the whole look in the mirror thing, tell yourself you like yourself type of thing. But he then spoke it into existence because the more he said it, the more people heard it, the more people repeated it, and people started to believe it. And and I'm nicking this, this isn't a quote, but this phrase. I heard pe- someone talking about this, which is what gave me the inspiration to kind of jump this one up my list. I said it's the same, it's what, it's what politicians do. They, they will keep telling you the same thing over and over and over and over and over again until you believe it, until enough people believe it that it becomes fact. And that's that's why that's why I like that quote. I think it's it's got so many angles to it and it's it's such a powerful tool for so many reasons. Right, over to you. Also this for everyone out there in listening land, we are literally we've just mostly due to me, one hundred percent due to me and my all over the place scheduling, um we've just gone in, we've hit record and we're going. So we've not even done a little preamble. So can I just say Hello, Jose, and Ryan, who is away from work and is multitasking right now as we talk. I'm very pleased to see you because I didn't think we'd see you today. So, I agree. Hey, yeah. guys. It's great to see you. Right. Yeah. You look very professional as well. I like this. I've never seen it you does, look so doesn't professional. It? He looks, what, he looks very yeah. professional. Is my cam- like. Does my camera move for you? Look. It yes, does, it does. Yeah. Oh, look, you're fancy yeah. as well. Yeah. Fancy. I bought, I bought an iPad. I bought an iPad before I came out here, and um, for is those that... of you that are listening, it's it's not going to make any difference to you. But the camera moves with my face. It's, it's really cool. cool. I like it. That is so cool. Honestly, that is so cool. I love that. Yeah, long long time listeners of the podcast will know that I visited South Africa for work in March, and I'm back for a few weeks. Can't so, keep a good yeah. Griffy down. He's back out there yeah. again. Totally. Jet setting. Jet That's setting. it. But working you are. hard. Working hard. Yeah. Working um, really hard, really hard. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make sure it goes well because otherwise I don't want people to think it was a massive waste of time and a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, well, you do on... put in the extra graft. You do put in the extra graft, Ryan. I, you know, when you said to it, stuff. So, yeah. On the on air production notes, for a, a phrase that's become very common in the uh, office world of working from home, I've got a hard stop at six o'clock, guys. So you've got 22 minutes to get all your thoughts in. Okay. Less than that now, oh. in fact. So go. I am the greatest, Muhammad Ali. What do you think? Ryan, are you going to go? <laughs> <laughs> I've never no, seen Joe be so cautious. Go, <laughs> okay, so for me, this is, this is, it's okay. I think we've got to be careful with this, though. This is my caveat, and this is what came to mind. I think you can speak affirmations. Um, yes. 
but you can delude yourself too. Hundred percent. You've got to be careful. That's a good. That's a because really good thought. Yeah. You can speak it. <laughs> you can speak it, but you've got to follow through with actions to to, to do that. I mean, you know. Muhammad Ali did not like to say I'm the greatest and just did sat back on his sofa and go I'm the greatest I'm the greatest I'm the greatest and this is one of the things that I'm very very passionate about because there's a book called The Secret I read it and it says all you've got to do is think and imagine you're doing this thing and da 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 but there's a massive piece missing from it you've got to actually do some work you've got to put in the work like, but I think what you're saying Lee what I really liked about this was what you're saying is you speak the affirmation but what you do is you then it encourages you to do the actions that are necessary for that to become a reality, right? It's the it's the work, but it, it's the work when people aren't looking. It's the work when people aren't watching. It's where Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay, as you would formerly known, and Ryan, you're the sports guru here, so please correct me if I'm wrong. You know, putting in the work, putting in the training, and he trained super hard. I mean, crazily hard um, to get to where he wanted to be. So it doesn't just come about by. Of course, you had some natural talent as well, but you know you still got to harness that natural talent just because you're you've got a got a, almost like a gift for boxing. It doesn't necessarily going to be the best because you still have to harness that gift, and he did by working super hard, putting himself out there like you talked about. I've been editing that that episode by the way, putting yourself out. I really love that episode by the way. You two, you two did it in your own. I loved it by putting yourself out there, taking risks, and really putting yourself on the line, which you do in boxing. You've got to be prepared. You've got to be fit. You've got to be prepared to take the hits. So I'd just be a caveat around that, that yes, you can speak affirmations, but you've got to have a plan to start to make that a reality. And that means having a small action steps. It could be that, you know, if you want to be the greatest at something, then you've got to t start taking a few steps, right? And I think, Ryan, you mentioned this before, actually, that, you know, there can only be a certain amount of percentage can be the greatest at something, right? But it doesn't mean you don't, you can't, you, you can't try, but there is a very small percentage of, there's that whole against the, the wind type thing where you're pushing against things. But that's how great people win because the, the, the odds are stacked against them. And, uh, yeah, I just love that quote. Um, I am the greatest, but you've got to back that up, haven't you? Um, and he backed it up for sure. Yeah, that's my view anyway. I think that's a good point about the... Um... I'm playing my microphone. Can you hear me all right again, by the way? I can, yeah. You good? You're talking yeah. about the delusion bit. Good. Lee. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is, that's a good point. And I've seen this where, you know, you see people and you do think, how do you have that view of yourself? And everyone else has this view of yourself. So you do have that risk that you, because you're right, you do have to back it up. And obviously, Valley was in the boxing world and he was at a very high level. He kind of then, I think he did a, add a layer of mystique to it, though, that came in because of, what he said and how he said it and how you believe it. And I think at that highest level, you know, the whole, you can be excess, you do will well. Less, less, think less cheesy than that. But I do think there is something in the messages you say to yourself, both positive and negative, because I think you can, you can tear yourself down with self-doubt if you say, you know, you're not as good as that person. You don't look as good as they do. You're not as smart as them. You're not doing as well as that. You're not where you should be on plan. So there's a whole negative affirmation side to it as well. And I think the positive affirmation is such a strong tool for building that self-belief. But you're right, it's like everything. Everyone, you can use your powers for good or you can use them for evil. And there's that risk that you just convince yourself you're amazing, but there's no there's no goal attached to it. So there's no delivery. There's nothing that comes with it. And that's that's where those problems can really come in. Well, I like that because if you say you're going to be the greatest, what are you going to be the greatest at? And what's the next milestone for you to hit to become that? So... Yeah, I really love that. Anyway, Some, sorry, Sometimes I have to worry what I'm not going to be the greatest at. It's such a challenge. Oh, Lee, I love the modesty right there. That's, uh, if anything, I think my greatest strength is my modesty. I love it. It's, Actually, hard, it's hard with so when you're so good at so many things, to be this modest is a real strength. I see Ryan smiling away there. It's brilliant. This, this is great. Go on, Ryan. Go on, jump in. You know you want to jump in. Go on. <laughs> I think there's a swearing word running through Ryan's head as he thinks about me right now. <laughs> <laughs> the... The the quote is an interesting one because if he hadn't have been the best of all time, then it would, he would have been a joke. He would have been mm. run amok. You know, he genuinely believed in his ability to, to become the best and, you know, he proved that. Um, he went out and he did that. So, you know, you can only um, give credit where it's due, I guess. But I think for the... Uh, Joe, you alluded to it and I've said it before, the vast majority of people will say that and not achieve it. And there would have been people at the time when he first said it that was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And, and I know that he came up in boxing around um, a really strong racism time in America and he had to kind of be uh, outlandish outlandish to be seen I think and heard um, so that it might have been that that was part of the 
motivation to say something like that you know people if, if somebody was to come into our workplace now or your workplace now or wherever and say you know they could they could be a, a, an internal mover or they could be a long time mem- serving member and they could say you know i'm the best at x i'm the best best at y you just roll your eyes and be like oh it's somebody else that's cocksure and arrogant doesn't really know the world but it's about how you kind of back it up as well and if you get if you if you lead that perception of yourself to be the best and you do deliver for the most part and you push that kind of thing through then people will kind of let it go and be like yeah he's all right he does a good job i guess um but if you're not um you only make a fool of yourself um and i spent a long time over the years being told i had uh, an overinflated ego and was perhaps slightly arrogant so you know i've learned this life rule or life lesson, I guess. I wouldn't say I'm any less arrogant now. I just hide it. Better. I was going to say you can probably take the I word perhaps out of that sentence earlier. <laughs> do you know what though? I just want to say, can I just say? I know, I know you said that, and and I know we, when you do need a level of confidence, don't you? And we talked about arrogance. But actually, to be tell the truth, though, Ryan, do you want know to say thanks for really being honest about you know that you had that that lesson to be learned? Because um, that's a really brave thing to admit, isn't it? Because you know, because you do. We all want to be good at something. We do want to be great, don't we? We would, you know. Is that well, I still probably have I still probably have the the biggest ego in most of the rooms. But again, I, I <laughs> hide it. it. I, At least you admit but it. I, no, but, I, but I do you my best to it. hide it. Yeah. No, but I do my best to hide it because yeah, that yeah. isn't it isn't who I am to be yeah. um, like that. I guess not anymore anyway. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it, I just try and be a more representative person, or at least a more likable person. And then when I do something right then you know people people build that ego for you don't they the nothing's better than being confident in something and having somebody else tell you that you're good at it you know if you're a really good cook and you think you're a really good cook that's fine but you get the real validation when you actually cook for somebody else and they're like cool you're good at that yeah i love so. that ryan actually um because you've actually sparked another thought and uh, jump in lee with it all ryan what do you think but there's a stoicism quote and i love stoicism we've got into the last couple of years we've been sort of talking about on the podcast but it's all about deeds, not words. Deeds, not words. Like actions, not words. Like, if you are the greatest, well, prove it then. Like, like, just do it. Just like Ryan said, if you are the greatest, other people will be your voice box, the voice for you. You won't need to say it because people will just talk about you, about it, because you are great at what you do. And I think, oh my God, I'm just getting chills talking about that. That is something that really resonates with me, Ryan, when you said that, because. Um, there's another book I read called The Four Agreements, and I don't know if anyone's read it, so thank you so much in the TikTok, because um, I've got Lou saying, um, you know, defending some of the stuff in there, which is great. But in The Four Agreements, um, there's, it talks about that words are spells. Like, so if you, if you speak them, then, you know, that actually does have some sort of effect. But you've really, not only have you, like, if you say I'm the greatest, and you wholeheartedly believe it, and you put the action in place to, 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 to fulfill it, then you're more likely to do it. But if you just say the words, but there's no real actions, or like Ryan says, there's nothing behind it to back it up, then you're just deluding yourself. Um, and so the four agreements talks about that. And again, Ryan talked about another thing, which really, really I found really resonant with me, is that, you know, if someone goes into it, I'm the greatest, yeah, people are gonna, you know, gonna judge straight away. And we are, we talked about, we don't wanna judge, right? So, you know, if someone said that in the room, I'd want to try and say, well, okay, let's give them the benefit of doubt. Go do it. Show me then. I would love to see some evidence of this greatness. Um, because you could be, there could be someone who says, I'm going to, and they are good. They're absolutely great. Um, so I suppose there's a, a little bit of, if someone says it, not an instant roll my eyes. Oh, here we go. You know, but actually, okay, well, you say you're going to be the greatest. Well, let's see it then. Let, let's, let's see what this is. Because what I wouldn't want to do is undermine someone who, I suppose who who does has that has that aspiration. No, again, I, I say when I coach people when and they say to you they want to achieve this goal. I always talk when I train coaching out. I say don't judge that. If someone says they want to do X, then run with it. All you do to do as a coach is sense, get them to sense check it and say what are the actions they're putting in place to do that. So it really links lovely into that type of you know you want to be the greatest. Well, okay, well, scale of one to ten. You want to achieve it by X, you know, how confident are you, right? If it's a five, then you're not really confident. What what needs to happen? What have you done? What haven't you done? If it's an eight, what have you done? What can you do differently to get it to a 10, right? So those are the sorts of questions. 
um, that I would ask if I was coaching would say if they said they wouldn't do the greatest at something we need to sense check that and there needs to be some sort of, not me judging but I would they would need to look at it themselves so there's no self delusion anyway that, that's my piece on this I like that and that looks good Joe for a quick for a summing up then because I, I threw this out here to get the views on it because I definitely think there's something in it now if you again it's not my specialist subject but if you if you look online I've read some articles over the last week there's a lot of articles about is he really the greatest? And actually a whole compelling case as to why he's not. There's people obviously make the case that he is. The fact that he said it is the catalyst for those conversations. Mm. And it's without a shadow of a doubt, whether it's true or whether it's not, himself anointing himself and making that his catchphrase and living that is definitely what put it out there. So I definitely think there's something in it. There is 100% something in positive affirmations, whether it's for yourself or with other people. But then I think the important bit, like I said, if he never actually tried to be a boxer, or in fact, he wasn't already at a high level when he put himself out there. It's, you know, was he telling himself behind the scenes and that's what spurred him on to get where he got to? Or was he there and that's what put it over? But I definitely think, you know, the training, the discipline, the hard work. But I think the affirmation is almost like that's that's the cherry on top. That whether you agree or not, he's always in that conversation. And I think that, that self-belief, that affirmation, that putting it out there is part of it. But like you said, it's, it's part of it. It's a it's a piece of the recipe, and it's probably five percent rather than ninety five percent. And that's actually leading us into takeaway show. That's my takeaway. Is yes, it's important, but it's one ingredient in that success toolbox. I'd agree. Yeah. Which leads us in as I'm keeping on time. It's give us some takeaways. I'm doing some shilling, and we're out of here. It's a short one, but thank you everyone for joining us. Joe, what have you got? My takeaway is spells are words. So if you commit to the I am the greatest, uh, then what are the actions to become the greatest, right? So it's all about deeds, not words. But like you say, it's 5%. And thank you, Ryan, from you. Uh, my takeaway would be that you need to be careful uh, that you can cash the words from the checks your mouth writes. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. I like how you tie that in with your earlier comments on yourself as well. That feels like that's one that's at the <laughs> forefront of your mind now. Thank you for that. Appreciate Maybe. both of you, everyone being with us. Again, uh, people, we've been live on YouTube and TikTok. Just search Jose Noy Inspiration Nation. Stick it in your Google machine. We're on Twitter at listen to o listen t o i n listen to i n. I did that back to front. And inspirationnation.org.uk merchandise. Joe's newsletter, full archive. Yada yada yada. All that jazz. Massive interaction on TikTok today, by the way. Really, really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you, everyone. 7.5k likes, Lee. Fantastic. Look at those numbers. Can't lie with numbers. Well, you can lie with numbers, but we like these numbers, so we're going to stick with them and say they're true. <laughs> and I'll count this down. Them. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys Catch later. You guys later. Guys later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.